The first type of electrical circuit element I'm going to talk about are power sources or supplies. Power supplies create electrical power, usually from a non-electrical source. There are a variety of different types of power supplies. In this video, I'll talk about what are called ideal independent power supplies. Power supplies provide electrical power to our circuits. Usually, the fundamental source of the power is non-electrical. For example, batteries convert a chemical reaction to electricity, and turbines use fluid flow to turn a generator which creates electrical energy. Power supplies are active circuit elements, so we don't have to use the passive sign convention for the power supply voltages and currents if we don't want to. There are a variety of different ways to model power supplies. Engineers will generally choose the simplest model that's appropriate for a given physical power supply. Power sources can be considered to be either current or voltage sources, based on the primary parameter they provide to the circuit. Batteries, for example, are generally represented as voltage supplies, since their voltage remains constant over a fairly wide range of currents. Sources can also be categorized as either independent or dependent. Dependent sources provide power that's controlled by a voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit they're powering. On the other hand, independent sources are not directly controlled by the voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit. Finally, sources can be either ideal or non-ideal. Ideal sources don't exist in reality, but they can be a useful approximation in many cases. For the rest of this video, I'll talk only about ideal, independent voltage and current sources. These are the simplest power supply models, but are useful in a wide number of cases. First, I'll talk about voltage sources. These are three common symbols used to represent ideal independent voltage sources. In all cases, the voltage being supplied is labeled next to the symbol. This circle with the plus and minus sign inside it is used to indicate either a time varying or a constant voltage. The plus and minus signs indicate which terminal has the assumed higher voltage. This symbol is for a constant voltage source, usually interpreted as a battery. The longer line has the higher voltage. Finally, this arrow also indicates a voltage source. The voltage value is usually taken to be relative to ground, which will be labeled elsewhere on the circuit schematic. The main property of ideal independent voltage sources is that they provide the specified voltage regardless of the current demanded of them. This means that we don't know anything about what current's being provided by the supply until we connect it to a circuit. Now let's look at the voltage current relation for an ideal constant voltage source. For this case, the voltage is just a constant value, V sub s, regardless of the current. This is a plot of the voltage as a function of current. Since the voltage is constant and does not depend on the current, this is a straight horizontal line. We don't know anything about the current directly from the properties of the source, so we don't have a functional relationship between voltage and current for an ideal voltage source. We don't even know whether this current is positive or negative. This means that we don't necessarily need to obey the passive sign convention when defining the current for that type of source. This is the symbol for an ideal independent current source. I'll use it to represent both time varying and constant current sources. An ideal independent current source provides the displayed amount of current regardless of the voltage difference across the current source. The voltage current characteristic for an ideal independent current source looks like this. The voltage is independent of the current and can take on any value. We don't even know anything about the sign of the voltage. It can be either positive or negative. As with the voltage source, we don't need to obey the passive sign convention if we define the voltage across the current source, since there isn't a functional relationship that relates the voltage and the current. It's important to remember that the ideal independent sources in this video are only mathematical models that approximate the behavior of actual sources. A model of a circuit element will have limitations that make it behave differently from a real element. Our goal when modeling a circuit is to choose the simplest model that adequately describes the behavior of the real element. 
One obvious problem with ideal sources is that they can deliver infinite power. Since an ideal voltage source can provide any current, the current can be infinite, which is impossible for a real device. Likewise, since an ideal current source can provide any voltage, the voltage can be infinite, which is also impossible. So depending on the circumstances, these models can be unrealistic. Therefore, the underlying assumption when using an ideal source is that its actual current or voltage will be low enough so that its behavior is close enough to ideal. There are fairly simple approaches to modeling sources that do have limited power output, and we'll see some of those later in this course. Ideal independent power supplies provide a specified voltage or current to a circuit regardless of the circuit itself. This is an unrealistic assumption, but it can be useful if the voltage or current provided by the device is low compared to the device's inherent limitations. Our next video will be about dependent sources.